Good morning and welcome along today. It's Amaris and my great joy, um, Inya, welcoming you along to our Hi. online church this week, um, and especially right now for a, a short devotion. Um, I do hope and pray that whatever kind of week you've had, whether it's been stressful, um, or you've been home by yourself, or just out at work, um, that we can take this time and just enjoy the, the Sabbath that God has given us, and ultimately be drawn closer to Him, um, and also find a time of connecting and fellowship with one another. Um, this is my prayer for you, and again, I do hope and pray that this devotion is a blessing for you. So there was a man who was rich, and he lived a bit like a prodigal son. He partied hard, and he did everything he could to just enjoy the life that he thought. He didn't really care about anyone else. He just wanted to do what he needed to do, to party, to get more money, and to have the biggest house. He made his money, and he had lots of money, by creating the best weapons around and selling them to anyone and everyone who would buy them. People all around the world, both sides of wars and everything else, would buy from this man. If it had his name on it, you knew it was the best around. He didn't care who he sold it to as long as they paid him. One day though, he was going for a trip out in the desert in a car and he got ambushed and he was kidnapped and he was taken back to this cave that these men came from. And he was told that if he wanted to survive, if he wanted to live, if he wanted to have food, if he wanted to maybe one day see his loved ones again, he had to create for them the weapons that he had been making back home. They had decided that rather than paying this man for his weapons, that they would just kidnap him and make him build them for him at no price. So he asked them for all these different items and all this equipment, and he started working on what he described to them would be the best weapon ever. One day though, they came back to the cave and upon opening the door, into this little room in the end of the cave, they discovered that he was there in this amazing suit of armor. And he wasn't just showing them what it was like. He was fighting his way out. And he managed to escape them. He managed to make his way home because he had created the best piece of armor that he had ever built before. And it protected him. But he discovered something pretty amazing in this journey that he had been on. He discovered a righteous cause. He discovered that the weapons that he had been selling weren't always being sold to the right people. And they actually were hurting a lot of people out there. And so when he went home, he decided that he wasn't going to just sell weapons to anyone or everyone. But rather he was going to create weapons and armor and protection for those who were fighting the good cause to help protect people. And so we discover in the story that the man, Tony Stark, became Iron Man. And he went on to protect many, many different people. Now again, I know, this is a made up story. But there's a good lesson in this story for us. A lesson of finding a righteous cause, of finding righteousness in a way, of helping others, and making sure that what we do is right. He was doing what he thought was right. He was no longer tempted to live the same life that he had been living. His life was forever changed. And in some ways, that's the way that our life should be as well. In Ephesians chapter 6, verse 14, we read the first part two weeks ago, where we were having a look at the belt of truth, this belt that holds everything together. The next part of verse 14 talks about putting on the breastplate of righteousness, having it secure. Now, when you have a look at a breastplate, a breastplate, in many ways after the belt of truth, is really the next important, most important part. Why? The breastplate covers the vital organs. As they discovered, you can have an arrow go through an arm or through a leg, you can have some kind of a strike or a blow, and more often than not, the person or the, the warrior can still survive and live out in the battlefield. But if you happen to get an arrow through the chest or a strike to vital organs along here, the less likely to actually live. 
And so it was important that they had a strong piece of armor that protected the vital organs. And this is what the breastplate did. So it protects the vital organs. It protects your heart. It protects where your emotions, where your feelings, the people that you love are stored. The next thing that we actually see in this verse is it says, put on or putting on. In other words, in the Greek, we see it in the aorist tense, which is past tense. So it's something that we have already done. We have put on the armor of God. We have put on the breastplate. What's so important about this? Well, an easy way of kind of seeing it is like when you get up in the morning, you put on your clothes and you're good for the day. You make yourself presentable, you look good, and you kind of stay safe. When we put on the breastplate of righteousness, we're good for the day. We're good for the next little while. But what is this righteousness? What is this righteousness of Christ? Because it's not saying you're going to put on any kind of breastplate, but it's saying the righteousness of Christ. Well, in order to understand that, I want to share with you a few little Bible verses. The first one is in 1 Corinthians 1.30. But by His, or the Father's doing, you are in Christ Jesus, who became to us wisdom from God and righteousness and sanctification and redemption. Christ became righteousness for us. Christ became wisdom. So again, it's Christ that we're putting on. In 2 Corinthians 5.21, it says, He made Him who knew no sin to be sin on our behalf, that we might become righteousness of God in Him. Because Christ has taken our place, we can put His perfection, His righteousness over us, and He covers our blemishes. In Romans 1, 17, it says, For it is the gospel, the righteousness, for in it, sorry, the gospel or the righteousness of God is revealed from faith to faith as it is written, but the word or the righteous man shall live by faith. And it's pretty amazing this one here in Philippians chapter 3. I love this passage where Paul is talking here. More than that, I count all things to be lost in view of the surpassing value of knowing Christ Jesus my Lord, for whom I have suffered the loss of all things, and count them but rubbish in order that I may gain Christ and may be found in Him, not having righteousness of my own derived from the law, but that which is through faith in Christ, the righteousness which comes from God on the basis of faith. And then the statement from Job in Job chapter 2, or sorry, 29, verse 14. I put on righteousness and clothed me. My justice was like a robe and a turban. It's an amazing picture that we actually get here of putting on Christ, of it protecting us, of it clothing us, of it making us respectable. But for who? You know, one of the most effective ways that Satan gets at us is by, I guess, burdening us with guilt, with shame. With throwing those arrows and just saying, you're not good enough. You can't do it. Why would God ever love you when all you do is make mistake after mistake after mistake? And a lot of the time, we believe Him. We're like, well, yeah, I'm not good enough. I can't do this. I can't be like Christ. But you know, the awesome thing is, Christ isn't asking us to be perfect like Him. He's saying, sure, give it a try, but... And this is where the crucial comes. This is the answer that we can give to Satan's attacks. We need to remember that we are all we already wearing the breastplate of Christ. We are already wearing His righteousness. We already appear perfect because He covers us. If we put Him over us, He protects us. When God looks at us, He sees Christ. We don't have to do anything. We can't make ourselves perfect. We need to quit trying to be good enough and just accept what Christ has done for us. We need to just accept His gift, the life that He so freely offers us. His righteousness is durable enough and powerful enough and will protect us from any attack 
that Satan throws against us. His righteousness, if it covers us, will protect us. And I pray that each and every day that we accept, and it's pretty simple, accept what Jesus did for us, accept the life that he gave for us, accept his righteousness, and know that we are covered. I pray that you're encouraged by this. And again, I pray that you take this and you use this to defend yourself against any attack that Satan throws your way. Let's pray. Dear Heavenly Father, we just want to thank you that you don't call on us to be perfect because as you say, we can't do that. We try our hardest. We do the best that we can. But it's not about what we do, God. It's about what you have done. And ultimately you say, take my righteousness, take my life and let it cover you. I have already paid the price. I am standing here now offering my life for you. And God, I pray that we accept the life that you so freely give. We accept the righteousness. And ultimately, like the story of Tony Stark of Iron Man, that we don't just keep doing the same thing, but that it changes us and that we become better people because you cover us, because you are in our life. We pray all these things in the mighty name of Jesus. And we can't wait to see you in his name. Amen. I pray that you all do have a blessed Sabbath and I pray that you have a great week ahead. Again, if there's anything we can do, please don't hesitate to call us. God bless and again, stay safe during these crazy times. Bye.